Hey everyone, I'm Carolyn. Welcome back to another episode of As I See It. If you stumbled here because you saw my face, just know this is not my RV channel. This is my political channel. And if you don't want to hear my politics, uh, you can click away. But I hope you'll stick around for a minute because I have some historical context that I want to share today. I don't know how Trump Republicans are feeling about the Supreme Court decision yesterday. Honestly, it should be terrifying everybody. Everybody should have had a visceral gut punch reaction to their ruling. What is really affecting me the most is that more than 250 years ago, we separated from a nation because the people who came here were tired of living under the rule of one person, a king. They came here because they wanted freedom from an authoritarian-like leader who dictated the religion they had to practice, who dictated how much success they could have in their lives. Remember, in Britain, they had the class system, the caste class system back then. And then basically, if you were born a farmer, you had no opportunity, no chance to become anything but a farmer. So those those people left Britain, came to this new land, and decided to set up a different form of government that was by the people for the people, where the caste system no longer existed. If you were born a farmer, you could become a president, where you could practice any religion you wanted, that no supreme being would make choices for everybody, that no supreme being would be above the law. We came here to escape a system in which a king dictated everything. 250 years later, the exec, the uh, judicial body, the highest judicial body in the land, whose sole purpose is to defend the Constitution, just freaking ripped it up. Complete. I mean, I'm 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 astounded at how it is possible for a court whose sole purpose is to defend the Constitution just spit on it, ripped it up, used it like toilet paper. That Constitution is in place, was put in place by the Founding Fathers to make sure this country is never run by a king or a dictator or an authoritarian ever again. And the Supreme Court basically made the president a king. They are above the law. They can literally kill their enemies, imprison their enemies. They can take away all of the consumer pre protections in the government. We already saw that with another recent Supreme Court decision that the FDA has no rights anymore to protect us because six justices on this court are bought and paid for by Christo-fascist big money donors. Bought and paid for, corrupt. So we now live in a country we can't even pretend to be a democracy anymore. For 250 years, we have been a beacon of democracy around the world. We have been an example. We have tried through, I mean, we've spent billions of dollars and lives on wars all around the world trying to promote democracy. And today, our democracy ate itself, devoured its head. So I wanna talk a little bit about history and I hope you're still here, if you don't agree with my politics. I hope you're still here. Uh, many of you know who've been following me for a while. I studied, I, I say political science and economics for short. The full uh, degree that I have is in political economy of industrial societies. My area of focus was Russia. So in that major, I studied political science, economics, and history, mostly. That was an interdepartmental major. So... What I know best is my history of Stalinist Russia. And of course, we all know about the Holocaust. And here is what is one of the things that is so alarming about Trump's rhetoric. He's talking about rounding up all the immigrants, illegal immigrants, into camps. You know who else rounded up people into camps? 
both Hitler and Stalin. Stalin in Russia, they were called gulags. They were work camps. And at first they were for farmers who had the nerve. So, so Stalin came in, wanted to spread socialism throughout the land, and he did it very forcefully, revolutionarily. And I did a whole video about how communism and Marxism isn't what we think it is and how there are two different forms. I'm going to put a link. You can watch that video. But basically, Stalin turned into a, a horrible authoritarian in under the guise of socialism. You know, but absolute power corrupts absolutely, as we're seeing with the Supreme Court and as we see with, you know, many of the dictators in our history. Stalin, uh, Hitler, uh, Tito, Mussolini. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so Stalin was trying to socialize all the farms and all and a lot of little farmers got caught up in it and they protested and they got shipped off to these work camps or gulags so it was supposed to be for prisoners who did who defied the law and what happens same with hitler what happens so those of you who think you know what it's a good idea to round up illegal immigrants it's a really good idea to put them in camps okay the apologists for Hitler and Stalin probably thought the same thing. But what inevitably happens is innocents get rounded up. Those camps become not just places for the intended target, Jews, farmers, illegal immigrants. They become big, huge camps, work camps, death camps for political dissenters. Trump is already telling you he is going to go after the people who have challenged him. He's already telling you what he is going to do. The media, I can't imagine what the media must be feeling right now. Because I remember, so I went to the Museum of Horrors, I think in Prague. Everybody should visit that. It was basically a room after room after room of what happened during uh, Nazism and Stalinism. And it goes through and tells you all the millions of innocent people. No, there's no quoting fingers. Millions of innocent people who got caught up in these roundups and got murdered. Either in the camps or after they left the camps because of the horrible conditions. These camps aren't just for Im the illegal immigrants that Trump is telling you about. They're not just for illegal immigrants. First of all, anybody who's brown, anybody who looks of Latino de descent is going to be rounded up. I think he's even saying, even if they're legal, they're going to be rounded up. Is that the country you want to live in? That just because the color of your skin, you could be a citizen, you're going to get rounded off and rounded up and shipped off to a, a death camp? Next are the people who try to defend them, the people who hide them, friends and family members. Maybe you have a granddaughter who's mixed race. You don't want to see her have to go off to a camp, so you hide her. You get caught, you're next. You go to the death camp. Then there's the media, the intelligentsia, the professors, the people who have had the nerve to speak out against Trump and Trump's form of government. Stalin did it. That's the next round of people who ended up in the camps. Anybody who disagreed with Stalin's ideology were, were made enemies of the state. No trial, basically. I mean, it was a puppet trial because he controlled everything read Project 2025, where Trump and his minions plan on completely dissecting our government, our checks and balances, like just gutting it, so that he is the supreme being over everything. So these people, there won't be any more fair trials and there won't be any more fair elections, but we'll get to that in a minute. So if somebody is accused of being an enemy of the state, there is no fair trial. They either are going to go to jail, they're going to go to a death camp, or they're going to get hung, or they're going to get killed. History repeats itself unless we learn from it. And if anybody is watching this who is still thinking they may vote for Trump or may not vote for Biden, this is the future. This is our future. And we know that because we've seen it play out. Putin, a real-time, current example. 
Look up what has happened to anybody who has dared to run against him in recent elections. They mysteriously get poisoned. They mysteriously fall out windows. Big business leaders even who all of a sudden decide that they want a bigger piece of the pie end up dead. Is that the country? Is that the, a world you want to live in? These camps in the past under Nazi Germany, under Stalinist Russia, they're real. And it wasn't just, again, I'm going to reiterate, it wasn't just the intended targets who ended up murdered, worked to death, or spent decades in, in work camps. It wasn't just the intended targets. You want to talk about a slippery slope. Once you start making major, huge death work camps all across the country, it's so easy for people to just be put on a train and disappear. Never be seen or heard from again. It's going to be anybody who speaks out against Trump. I'm a little worried, to be honest with you. I mean, I know I'm tiny. I know I'm nobody. But that's what happens. We start getting snitches ratting people out the next thing you know the KGB is knocking on your door whatever Trump's version of the KGB is going to be and you're shipped off to a work camp a death camp anybody in your family who's brown or trans or LGBTQ plus Hitler also if you, in case you don't know gay people LGBTQ people ended up in the camps and the way this country is going and their hatred. They've been trained and told how horrible and rotten gay people are, trans people are, immigrants are. What about women who have had abortions? They're going to end up in death camps. The husbands who knew about it and let it happen are going to end up in death camps. More than uh, 14 million people, I think it was, passed through Stalin's death camps. More than 2 million died. People who had the audacity to speak out against his authoritarian regime. We know that's where we are headed. And that's why we're terrified. Whatever you think of Biden, I know a lot of people are accusing him of almost starting World War III and supporting genocide. You want to talk about genocide? You want to talk about genocide? Look up genocide in Hitler. Look up genocide in Stalin. Look up genocide in Mussolini. If you are thinking about not voting for Biden, you're voting for Trump. Period. This is the future of America. I, I, I'm, I'm emotional and beside myself, as I know many of you are. How did the United States of America get here? One last thing. I'm, I'm kind of, there's a million things going through my mind. But I was on my walk this morning and I was thinking, how can Biden allow Trump, if he wins, to take over the White House? How can we allow our democracy to be voted away? And I realized that's what a democracy is. That if the majority of people, and that's a whole other story because it's not going to be the majority, but we have this ridiculously flawed, racist electoral college still in place, which needs to go, which totally subverts the will of the majority of the people for the will of the, a few. It's ridiculous. But anyway, that's what democracy is. If democracy, if the majority decides they don't want to be a democracy anymore, then that's democracy. Then democracy has worked. We can literally use democracy to undo democracy. <laughs> I wish I had a silver lining for you. I wish I could say something that could make you feel better, but this is a dark, dark, dark day in America, and unfortunately, there is absolutely nothing we can do except vote, mobilize, get involved. The only thing that can undo this, I watched a clip of Rachel Maddow last night. She said the only way to prevent 
a king is to get a good, honest, moral person in the White House. That means forever and ever until something changes with the Supreme Court decision, we only can vote, can elect people who aren't going to be corrupted by all that power. The Supreme Court literally gave him the power to assassinate his enemies. Literally. 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 And the only way to stop this slide, that's not even a strong enough word. We're not even sliding anymore. We're there. We're done. America and democracy is done unless we keep a good, honest, moral person in the White House. And that's Joe Biden. It certainly isn't Trump. Okay, here, if you're still with me and you're a Trump supporter, let me ask you this one last, this one question before I leave. And I hope that you will literally, seriously take a minute. You're going to be emotional. It's going to feel like a kick in the gut. You're going to get defensive. But do me a favor. Put that aside for a second and ask yourself, does Trump lie? Does Trump lie? No yeah buts. Does Trump lie? And if your answer is anything but an emphatic no, he doesn't, then ask yourself, if he lies, how do I know he's not lying to me? How do I know he's not lying to me? All right, I'm going to leave you with that. The only solution to prevent the United States from turning into an authoritarian fascist country is to keep him out of the White House and any future wannabe dictators. Not an easy task, but it's time for us to hit the ground. Is vote and uh, do everything we can to make sure Joe Biden gets elected. All right, I'll see you again soon. Take care.